welcome back to another episode of the uh, DCS training tutorials that I'm going to be going through. Uh, I am doing these. I've done these. I've done some of these once before, but some of these I've done. But we're going to go through them as if I hadn't done them before because I really it's been a while since I've done them and I need to do them again. So we're going to go ahead and go through the cold start tutorial on the F-18, F-A-18, and let's see what they have to say for us. Welcome to this training lesson on starting up the Hornet. In some missions, you will find yourself in a cold and dark hornet that you will need to bring to life. While this can be a rather long process as described in the manual, you can also enable the auto start function. However, for this lesson, we'll review the full startup procedure. Press spacebar when you are ready to get started. The first thing we need to do is enable the two batteries. This will allow operation of the canopy and power the engine igniters. You'll also notice that the integrated fuel and engine indicator, or IFE, in the lower left portion of the instrument panel will have power. Move the battery switch to the up or on position with a right mouse button click. The Hornet has two fire detection circuits, A and B, that test for fire in the engines, auxiliary power unit, and bleed air system. Before we go into detail on that though, Check that the hydraulic brake pressure gauge for the wheel brakes shows at least 3000 PSI. Confirm this by looking at the gauge, which is located to the left and up from the highlighted fire test switch. Okay, now put the spring loaded fire test switch in the up test A position and keep holding it up to test the A circuits. To do this, Engine place the mouse left. over the fire test switch and hold left. down the right mouse button. Engine, Keep right. holding the mouse button down Engine, fire, and do not right. release it until it runs through APU, all the fire, fire test audio warnings. APU, In addition to the audio warnings, also left. note the fire test warning Bleed lights on the upper left and right Bleed portions right. of the instrument panel. Right. When it's done, press spacebar. Okay, that's the first one I guess. We will now do the same thing for the B circuit. After waiting 10 seconds, place the mouse over the fire test switch and hold down the left mouse button to move the switch in the down test B position. Keep holding it down Engine and then release it left. once all the fire Engine warning fire audio left. messages have been played. Engine fire right. Well done. Engine Press space fire bar. right. APU fire. Well, it would be APU nice if, uh, I mean, it's convenient that they made Bleed it to where all you have to do is just press, Bleed air left. press mouse buttons to make it work. Bleed like air that. right. Good. Bleed air right. Okay, we're waiting for that. All right, seems to be done. Let's move on. Good job. Note that in the top left portion of the IFE, you can see the RPM and temp of both the left and right engines. These will be important for when we start the engines. We will now turn on the auxiliary power unit, or APU. This is a small, self-contained engine that augments the bleed air system and will start turning the engines for engine starts. Place the APU control switch in the up or on position with a left mouse button click. Okay, uh, that's going to be a little further down in the cockpit. Right click, left click. Once the green light next to the APU switch comes on, move the engine crank switch to its right position, marked by the R with a right mouse button click. This will allow the APU to power the Air Turbine Starter, or ATS, which in turn allows the Aircraft Mounted Accessory Drive, or AMAD, to start turning the fan blades within the right engine. Alright, so the APU light is on, so they want us to try to start, they want us to start the right engine. Once the right engine RPM has reached 20%, as indicated on the IFE, move the right throttle from off to idle by pressing right shift home. This in turn will introduce fuel into the engine combustion chamber and start the igniters. Once the right engine RPM has reached 60%, the right engine start cycle is complete and the right generator is automatically engaged. Once at 60%, press spacebar. Hmm. Not sure where the I feet. Oh, right here, okay. So we're at 30%. It says once we've reached 20, we want to put this into idle. Is right shift. Okay, so now the right throttle is at idle, which will allow the RPM to come up to, I guess, 60. And I guess I'm assuming they're going to repeat the process on the next one. <clears throat> so it's at 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Alright, so that's done now. We can move on. When we conducted the tests of the A and B fire Go test left. circuits, 
We also closed the bleed air shutoff valves. We need to reopen Flight these control. by rotating the bleed air knob clockwise 360 degrees from norm to norm. Do this by right mouse button clicking on the outer portion of the knob. When done, press spacebar. All the way around until it says norm again. With the right engine running and generator power on, place the left and right digital display indicators, or DDIs, to the day position using right mouse button clicks on both brightness selector knobs. Next, rotate the HUD Symbology brightness control knob clockwise by placing your mouse over it and rotating your mouse wheel forward. Once you see video displayed on the left and right DDIs and HUD, press spacebar. Okay. In the lower center of the instrument panel is the multi-purpose color display, or MPCD. Rotate the power and brightness control knob to the full bright setting by placing your mouse over the knob and rotating your mouse wheel forward. It will take a few moments to power on. Press spacebar once you see video displayed on the MPCD. It's this screen here, I guess. All right. On the left DDI, press the menu push button to bring up the support page. The support page has several sub-pages, like the checklist, engine, fuel, ADI, and HSI. For now, though, press the FCS push button to select the flight control system page. The FCS page shows the status of the control surfaces and any detected FCS errors. The X's indicate detected errors, but we will address those once the left engine is started. You should not see any two, R, or FADEC caution messages along the bottom of the left DDI. Note that by default, you will not have the built-in test or bit page on the right DDI. We'll come back to this. During this lesson and future lessons, you will often see and hear the master caution. This is the large yellow labeled button on the instrument panel that will light when any caution condition is triggered. There will also be an accompanying deedle deedle sound to draw your attention. Press this button or click on it to acknowledge the caution and extinguish the light. Press the master caution again to restack the caution and advisory notices along the bottom of the left DDI. Cautions will be along the top and advisories in smaller text along the bottom. If the left DDI is not on, then the caution and advisories will be displayed on another display by default, though, they will be on the left DDI. The Hornet comes equipped with an Inertial Navigation System, or INS. Use right mouse clicks to set the INS switch, located on the sensor panel to the ground position. This will start an INS ground alignment. Now it is time to crank the left engine. Go ahead and move the engine crank switch to its left position, labeled L by left mouse clicking it. Once the left engine is at 20% RPM, as indicated on the IFE, move the left throttle from off to idle by pressing right alt home. This will add fuel to the engine and start the igniters. When the left engine is at 60% RPM, press spacebar to continue. <clears throat> okay, just waiting for this to pop up to 60% and then we can move on with the tutorial. Looks like it's doing its navigational stuff over here. All right, we're at 60%. <clears throat> On the FCS page, we have quite a few X's indicating abnormal FCS readings. To clear these, press and hold the FCS reset button. Hmm, FCS reset button, does it tell me? Oh, okay, there's a little arrow thing here. You can follow the arrow, so we have to press and hold. Located in the back of the left console, is the panel for the onboard oxygen generation system, or OBOX. Go ahead and set the OBOX switch to its up, on position. To the left of the INS switch oh, is the radar touch. switch. Set this switch to the operate position using your right mouse button. Don't worry, the radar will be in silent mode. You won't microwave the ground crew. Our next step will be to run a bit on the flight control system, or FCS. Before doing so, set the flaps to the up, auto position with the F key, or two right mouse button clicks on the flap switch. 
We'll now run a bit of the flight control system. This moves the control surfaces to their limits to test for any software or mechanical errors. First, select the FCS bit page from the bit page on the right DDI. So they've highlighted this one. It says FCS-MC go. I'm not sure why, how I'm supposed to remember that that's the bit page though. To run the FCS bit, we'll need to activate two controls at the same time. While holding up on the FCS bit switch on the right wall, press the FCS push button on the right DDI. Upon doing so, you'll see the controls being cycled on both the FCS DDI page, and if you look outside the cockpit, you can watch the wing and tail control surfaces moving. Okay, so they want us to hold up on this switch while we're also pressing this button. That's not physically possible based on the way that, this, that I have my control set up. But there is a keyboard, uh, there is a keyboard hotkey for that, so I'm going to hold down Y and then press the button, and I guess that's going to work. So I will hold down, well, actually, let me look down to make sure that it actually works. Y, oh, yeah, that does work. We'll hold down Y and then we'll press this button. Once the FCS bit is complete, marked by the beep tone, place the flap switch in the center or half position with a left mouse button click on the switch. Takeoff is done with flaps set to half. Once we are airborne, we'll move them to auto. And so we put this back in the For half. takeoff, we will want our stabs trimmed for 12 degrees. To set this, press and hold down the takeoff trim button. Upon doing so, you will also notice that the stab values on the FCS page will change to 12. The leading edge flaps, trailing edge flaps, <coughs> and rudder should all have values of 30 degrees. You should also have no X's on the FCS page. Okay, well, they had a little highlight down here for the rudder tram. I'm not sure why, but they basically want me to uh, hold down the V button. I guess that's going to auto trim everything to take off. Uncage the backup ADI by placing your mouse over the SAI cage knob and rotating the mouse wheel aft until the red flag is stowed. Close the canopy by holding the canopy control switch in the down, closed position until the canopy is closed. Do this by pressing the key combination or placing the mouse over the switch and holding down the left mouse button. Once the canopy is closed, press spacebar to continue. Okay, canopy is closed, spacebar to continue. At this point, the INS has been aligned as indicated on the MPCD HSI page. Move the INS switch from ground to nav with one right mouse button click on the switch. Prior to taxi, press the menu push button on the left DDI to go to the TAC or tactical page. On the TAC page, you have access to sub-pages like the store's management system, attack radar, HUD, and electronic warfare pages. Okay, am I supposed to press it again? On the left DDI TAC page, select the HUD push button to display a mirror of the HUD on the DDI. This can be useful when head down <clears throat> or in case of HUD failure. Okay, I remember this the last time I went through it. It doesn't necessarily do the best job of keeping track of what your page is doing, but it does register button clicks. So sometimes you'll press the button, but it doesn't recognize that you're already on the page that it wants. So you'll have to press it again to get back to where you are. So we're trying to go to the HUD page here. Let's now set up the right DDI. Press the menu push button on the right DDI to bring up the tactical page. I also don't know if it helps to wait until he's done talking before you do those things. Press the menu push button again to bring up the support page. Now on the support page, press the FCS push button. We will want the HUD on the left DDI and the FCS page on the right DDI when we taxi and take off. The parking brake system is operated with the yellow and black parking brake handle. The handle is currently in the park position, indicated by the fact that the park label is visible to the pilot. Release the parking brake now by rotating the handle 45 degrees counterclockwise from the extended position. This can be achieved by left mouse button clicking the handle or pressing the right alt P key. 
This will release the lock and allow the handle to return to the horizontal stowed position, where the Emerge label is visible to the pilot. This concludes the current lesson on starting up the Hornet. As mentioned earlier though, there is also an option for automatically starting up the Hornet by pressing the left window's Home key. You can end the lesson now by pressing the Escape key. I have a feeling that from now on we're going to be doing the automatic startup because while it's cool to manually do that and maybe sometimes I'll want to, uh, that's just a lot of stuff to have to mess with and it takes a long time. So uh, thank you for joining me for this particular episode. Uh, we'll be back again for the next one uh, here shortly, but I need to process this video and get it uploaded. So I will see you for the next lesson in just a little while. Thank you for joining me and have a great day.